Family, it's time for another reaction video. So this is where I pick five videos. I have not seen these videos before prior to recording this, but it's one of my absolutely favorite things to do. So without further ado, let's do this. Yes, I'm a Christian too. Honestly, that is such a relief. A Christian yoga instructor. Oh no. You should come by and we'll get you started on your Kundalini awakening. Think, think. Yoga means union, specifically to Praman, the Hindu creation god. Listen, the Kundalini Awakening bears witness to a demonic presence in the practice of yoga. Kundalini Awakenings suspiciously come with side effects that mirror psychosis. It's just stretching. It is not just stretching. Each yoga pose is truly the worship of demons. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether you agree with it or if you know about it, because practice equals consent in the demonic kingdom. You're submitting to Hindu deities. Okay, so this video is not going to be about why I think yoga is good or bad. Not doing it. Not going down that rabbit hole. All I'm saying is it uh, definitely can go down the route of uh, what the gentleman was saying. So I think he made a good point uh, considering, you know, that she used certain verbiage, you know, uh, regarding the, the Hindu religion. So... It was pretty interesting. Uh, definitely makes you want to look into it a bit more. All right, next one. More than Jesus will say, oh, God accepts it exactly how you are. Biblical Jesus says, true, but do not stay as you are. He says, repent and believe means come away from sin. More than Jesus does not mind if you sit in church and live like the devil. Biblical Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Forsake sinful nature and come here i'll make you new so this was short but really good i think that he hit the nail on the head with the whole recent quote end quote modern jesus hey you know everything's all right everything's good just do you boo you know <laughs> that kind of thing um but anyways i think what really resonated with me was when he mentioned that God accepts you as uh, for who you are, right? Well, yes, he accepts you for who you are right now. And the expectation is that you not stay as who you are right now. Because think about everything that you're doing now. That, that's, you know, God doesn't want you to, to, you know, to just stay that way. He wants better for you. He wants more for you. So uh, again, the expectation is that sanctification will take place, which is just basically a theological term for being more like Jesus. Um, I mean, even the, the whole symbolism of baptism, what is it to die to your old self and, and come out new being born again? So anyways, great video. I believe it's a responsibility. No, the privilege. No, the glorious privilege of every believer to share their faith with others. That's why I share my faith with everyone I come in contact with. Everyone, really? <laughs> yeah, everyone. How do you do that? Uh, check out my shirt. Can't read it? Try this glove. Not working for you? How about this bracelet? No comprendo? Vistazo a estos. <laughs> Driving behind me? Read my bumper sticker. It says, it's okay if you follow close. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> oh, you're my waiter or waitress? I got a tip for you. Surprise! It's the gospel. I mean, what do you want? Money or eternity? <laughs> I also use these tracks. <laughs> So, what about talking to people about your faith? I, I don't really like people, but I love Jesus. <laughs> Scripture mint? Yeah, that was too funny. I know it has a message behind it, which was great. Ultimately, you know, obviously, um, you know, you, you can, if you love Jesus, you gotta love people too. But anyways, I think it was hilarious. Like, he just went so over the top with evangelism hey i have this i have a shirt i have a I have a hat i have i have <laughs> i have the glove uh the wristbands i mean he just went so to the extreme but it is funny because you know you do have a lot of people that you know wear all this apparel and and all this stuff but ultimately are they acting like Jesus? Are they, um, you know, portraying Jesus in, in a positive light, that kind of thing? But anyways, I, I think uh, it was a good video. I liked it. I can anticipate that the Orthodox Christian world tomorrow, inshallah, 
will accept the Quran as the word of God. And I am anticipating tomorrow that the Orthodox Christian world will accept Muhammad as a prophet of Allah. But they will jump up, come on, come on, take the shahada, take the shahada, take the shahada! Oh, what fools. So I really wish this guy unpacked a little bit more, gave us more substance or content to his reasonings. It also sounded uh, like he's not Muslim because at the end he mentioned, oh, what fools they are, right? But, uh, and just for you, just so you guys know, the word orthodox uh, or an orthodox Christian, or if you, you sometimes you'll hear it uh, in relation to Catholicism, is basically someone that follows every single rule. I mean, if you've read the Bible and know of like the Pharisees, Sadducees, those kind of people, they're orthodox. They will follow things to the core. Um, most times they're very hypocritical. Um, like the Pharisees, um, and, and not to say that all Orthodox Christians are. However, um, yeah, uh, Orthodox just basically follows traditions. Anyways, I digress. I think, uh, I would hope that this doesn't happen because then, in essence, it's like these Orthodox Christians are uh, denouncing what the Bible says and uh, the message is, and the message God uh, basically gives to us and says, I choose to believe something else. I choose to believe in Allah. I choose to believe that Jesus was a prophet. He wasn't the son of God. He's not God. Uh, so I truly, truly hope that this does not happen. However, in the world that we live in, I mean, the unfortunate truth is, uh, I think we're going to see uh, things happen that uh, we are not expecting. What we want is lying to us. Every one of us has deceitful desires. Anybody in here knows this because you say, sometimes I feel like I'm my own worst enemy. Yes. Maybe not the worst, but one of the three. The world, the flesh, and the devil. He's all, Paul, the apostle, says, who will save me from this body of death? Who will change me? I need Jesus to change me. I got things that I want that I know if I get, I'm going to hurt myself or other people. I'm going to do something stupid. This is why God doesn't let you win the lottery, even though you pray and pray and pray. This is why God doesn't give you that high-paying job, because he knows if you get that high-paying job, he's going to, that high-paying job is going to take you right out of the church. This is, this is the truth of the scriptures, that God wants to change what you want. To be renewed in the spirit of your minds, verse uh, 24, and to put on the new self. Man, I really like this. Um, I mean, there, there, I think that it, it kind of spoke for itself. It's so impactful uh, to know, really know, that the reason sometimes God doesn't give us what we want is because ultimately it won't be good for for our spiritual walk and you know just understanding that alone helps us sometimes to be more grateful when we hear the no uh, than when we hear the yes so awesome very good love it